Is GTA 5's Los Santos a real place? Can you travel there from your couch? The other day, I came across the inaugural meeting of the Los Santos Hiking Club on Reddit. This is a group of guys who banded together to hike Mount Chiliad, the highest point in GTA 5. They treated it just like a hike in real life, only with more guns and less Tromix. And this got me thinking, is Los Santos an actual place? Yeah, you can only access it through your console, but as an environment, it shares a lot of similar characteristics to other real world places that I've been to. There's a ton of things to do, people to meet, and things to see. Also, there's a lot of carjacking there. Kinda like Newark, New Jersey. And it's not just Los Santos, whether it's Gotham City, Azeroth, Minecraft, or Skyrim. What's really interesting about exploring new worlds in video games is that we do it for a lot of the same reasons that we love travel in real life. One reason we love visiting new places in games and in the real world is to take in new scenery. Bryce Canyon National Park and the Great Barrier Reef are stunningly beautiful, according to pictures I've seen on the internet. But so are the sunsets in Red Dead Redemption and Halo's majestic ring world. And for this reason, the trend of in-game photography has totally taken off, as you can see from the pictures behind me. That and ridiculously awesome selfies. Selfies. There's even a lovely account of a Redditor's grandparents taking turns rowing a gondola in Assassin's Creed 2, which is just adorable. Also, when we travel, we get to experience a piece of history. In real life, you can take home a portion of the Berlin Wall, pet a descendant of Ernest Hemingway's cat, or if you're so inclined, you can try and use a giant hammer to add another crack to the Liberty Bell which apparently several people have tried to do. In games, Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed franchise has given us a yearly authentic look into times past, including the colonial United States, the Caribbean at the time of pirates, and 15th century Rome. And yes, in games, they are artificial recreations, but so is colonial Williamsburg for that matter. But whether we're on a sofa or on an ocean liner, the reason that we travel is to escape the everyday. You see it everywhere in travel advertising, as well as the many exotic locations in video games, which is understandable. The psychological benefits of travel are huge and well-documented. It can make you more confident and more creative. We'll link to some studies about it in the description. With video games, however, escapism generally has a negative connotation. But as Jay McGonigal has argued, escapism doesn't always have to be a bad thing. She says there are two ways that we escape in games, self-expression and self-expansion. If we play games to avoid thinking about something negative in our lives, like a failed midterm or a breakup, that's self-suppression. It's what leads to negative patterns of addiction and it's not good. But if you're escaping real life to forge new friendships or seek out positive experiences, such as wearing that cat suit from the new Super Mario Brothers with your friends. What is this? Is Mario in a cat suit? Is Mario in the cat suit? That's self expansion and that's a good thing. He just meowed! That was so sexy! So, could it be that players like the Los Santos Hiking Club are getting real world benefits from climbing a virtual mountain? Actually, yeah but don't take my word for it. A study done for the academic journal Physiological Behavior shows that the virtual outdoors can help people cope with stress, just like the real outdoors, unless those virtual outdoors are filled with Skyrim's bears. <laughs> and experiences in a virtual wilderness make people appreciate nature more and lead greener lifestyles. For instance, researchers at Stanford found that when people were forced to cut down a tree with a chainsaw in virtual reality, they used less paper afterwards in the real world. It's a good sound. In fact, visiting the winter wonderland of Snow World, a virtual reality therapy game, has been shown to be more effective for burn victims than morphine. But it's more than therapeutic. The virtual world of games allows us to explore places that we could never go in our lifetime. Shelter lets us see the forest from the perspective of a mama badger, which is not something that's going to happen in my lifetime, unless I'm reincarnated. Will Wright's Spore lets us explore the behavior of the universe in ways that Darwin couldn't have ever imagined. Brain growing time. Yay! NASA is even using the Octa's Rift to create a virtual exploration of Mars and is experimenting with virtual reality to explore distant planets and collect actual data. So, are the worlds of Los Santos, Skyrim, and Azeroth actually real? Well, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter that the expansive virtual worlds of games aren't located in physical reality. Because, as Extra Lives author Tom Bissell has argued, the experiences that we have in games aren't surrogate experiences, they're actual experiences. And maybe it's 
it's time that we move past the binary of the realness of the real world and the not realness of the virtual world. Sure, we've had paintings and movies and stories about fantasy worlds, but giant virtual worlds that you can explore to your heart's content? That's a radically new experience in the course of human history, and maybe we just don't have the language to describe it yet. But whatever words we do use, we can turn to the thoughts of playwright Henry Miller, who once said, one's destination is never a place but a new way of seeing things. So what do you think? Is the world of Los Santos an actual place? Hash it out in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week. Last week we talked about The Sims and reality television. Let's see what you had to say. Ravenclaw Tom loves The Sims, but in their own words, hates reality television with a passion that burns brighter than 10 times the core of the sun, which is just a lot of hate. I will pray for you. Dane Lewis loves The Sims for its impossible architecture. Apparently he builds houses with all bathrooms and no kitchens, which sounds like a nightmare. I look forward to your future career as an architect of unlivable houses. Basement Minion points out there's a core distinction with The Sims, specifically that The Sims is a private experience versus reality television, which is apparently a public experience. You're both right and wrong. In one sense, The Sims is private in the sense that you and you alone only experience what happens in your version of the game, right? No one else has that exact experience as you. But I also do think on places like Tumblr, Twitter, etc., there are whole sim communities of people sharing their experiences. You do get that kind of water cooler treatment when people are breaking down like the last episode of The Bachelor. You do start to see that with games like The Sims as well. The Mass Donut points out that competitive reality television shows like Survivor or The Amazing Race share some parallels with the world of video games, which I think is an excellent point. It's one of the critiques of The Sims, one that I don't necessarily agree with, is that because it's open-ended, it doesn't feel like quote unquote a game. It's more like a dollhouse. I don't necessarily think that's true. We don't need to really get into the, whether something's a game or not a game, but I will say that shows like Top Chef do share some similarities to what we traditionally love about games. Perhaps that is an episode for another time. Kyle G wants a Duck Dynasty Sims game. No, it's just, no. Michael Heath points out the Allison Kev experiment, which was run in the UK by a fellow who set up a game in The Sims 3, created these two characters and let them loose in the world. It's an amazing, amazing example of emergent storytelling in games. Um, Alice wants a family and her father Kev also sort of wants a family, he's romantic, but he's also kind of crazy. The best part is that this fellow just let them do whatever they want and just documented what happens. You should absolutely check out the experiment. It's really, really fascinating. We will link to it in the doobly-doo. Andres Pearson, like many Simmers, enjoyed killing his Sims in this case, killing all the families and then covering the facade of his house with gravestones, like the Adams family or something. Which is actually a really good point. When we watch reality television, we often desire for the highest form of drama. And what could be more dramatic than death itself? My personal preference was building a swimming pool and then taking out the ladder and letting them drown. But hey, that's just me.